This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, that means you're basically like a VIP member and you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get Or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get um first dibs on signing up for a live show you get episodes with no commercials you get our video because our video is no longer available on youtube it is only on patreon and the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows but also bonus episodes each month but if you're on a Patreon, you're VIP, you're going to get more. Because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. <laughs> this is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. In order to hear the full content, it's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. This is your bloody happy hour, Thursday edition. It's Thursday, we're thirsty, and we're, we need the murder, we need the blood. What's going on? It's, yeah, it's time, it's time. It's. I feel like it's been a whole week. It, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> it has. Um, we're going to Idaho today, but I don't think it's time yet. We got a, we got a little housekeeping to do. Mm-hmm. Do you have a dog story for all of mm-hmm. our dog lovers? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's just a story that I heard about a friend's dog. So I was gonna. What is it? I'm gonna tell you about it, but I don't know if we'd better help before or after the story. I don't know. Probably before. Okay. Let's just prepare the people. So. Bloody Happy Hour fans, the show is brought to you by Better Help. You know what that means? That means, um, let me find the right page. <laughs> that means that, you know what, it's 2024, it's a new year, it's time to crush some goals and start therapy because you know why? Therapy helps you find your strength and it helps you ditch those ridiculous, extreme New Year's resolutions that you're going to fail at anyway. So don't be a failure at life. Just go to therapy so your therapist can tell you what you're going to flourish in. Yeah, unless, you know, if some, maybe we've experienced like a bad therapist before. Yeah, I have actually. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, it's, this is a great time to, if you're thinking about starting therapy, to give BetterHelp a try. It's online completely. It's convenient, flexible. It can be suited to your schedule. You have to fill out a short questionnaire. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I mean, you can't lose with and BetterHelp. And it's so easy. You just go to betterhelp.com slash bloody. That's the most important part. And you get a 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bloody, B-L-O-O-D-Y. You're welcome. So, <clears throat> I have this friend who told me about her dog ate, like, a Delta 9, like, brownie thingy like cookies which is like so there's there's like i don't know there's it's like a a weed gummy it's like a weed thc yeah there's like traces of thc but Uh it's like sold in you could oh you can still get it from the store like here in texas where yeah yeah okay yeah I've heard of it. So it was like this, this, maybe the whole thing was like the size of a snicker bar. And there was maybe like a quarter of it that was remain like left. Well, their dog got onto the table and got the brownie 
Oh, I need to know what's going to happen. And so the girl wakes up in the morning and the dog is not in the bed with her. And she's like, where's my dog? And she (laughs) goes and sees the dog on the couch, sweating, had thrown up, was like, what is happening? What's wrong with you? Goes outside, finds the wrapper of the cookie completely emptied and eaten. Her dog is stoned. (gasps) Stoned and stoned. The dog cannot pee because the dog falls over. The dog is like high as hell. Got the munchies. Is like (laughs) wanting to eat all the food. Then like gets these like spurts of energy where he's like sprinting around and doing circle like just sprinting like oh crazy. Oh my goodness! Poor and Jack. The- <laughs> <laughs> is said girl named Caroline? <laughs> I don't know. The friend is so what? Tell me all this. You stuff. may not the want dog, to. Uh, it's not me. I'm called yes. ASPCA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you about an experience to just prepare, like warn everybody, like, hey, make sure you put your gummies <laughs> in a safe space or in a safe. I guess so your dog won't oh my get goodness. it and get so stoned. And like the dog's mouth was like hanging open. <laughs> did you have to like look up or call the person? Poison- the, I mean, did the, the person, person did, have to call the person control? reached out to their vet and the vet <laughs> was like, as long as he's responsive and does not vomit anymore, it's going to be okay. And so the dog did not do that. Then the dog like slept the whole day and then finally went to the bathroom around four o'clock in the afternoon like pooped it out or peed it peed out? and poop but like as he, the dog was like e- eating or drinking water like it he couldn't control like he would drips like pee drips was coming out because he couldn't i don't know like there was like uh you can't control your what? i don't know why because the vet did say that there could be some urinary incontinence like incontinence so <clears throat> dogs get stoned and then they sleep really ha- hard, but it, the person felt very, very, very bad for the dog <laughs> because the dog was real dizzy and could not even, on a walk, you take a dog on a walk, it pees on every single thing. Yeah. The dog could not even pee because every time it lifted a leg up, it would try to fall over. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this pe- I hope this person does not watch other people's dogs. I pet. hope. This person is not a dog sitter. No. Um, somebody told me that my dog needs THC gummies, but they sell them at PetSmart or this, CBD or well, something. Well, you know, you could. There's dog It's something. just, yeah. But this was. Um, For humans. And this was a very strong. Oh, so this person's owner is a pro at Delta 9. No, the person, <laughs> it was given to that person by a friend. They, br- they had brought it over. They were oh. like, oh, hey. And then, like, left it there, and so then that person felt real bad, but <laughs> it's all good in the hood, and the dog is fine and thriving, and he's this back to his... This had to have happened in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> he had his normal... He's back to his normal life, and he loves everything about life. Mm-hmm, I bet he does. And this... And he's still trying to get up on the counter and get stuff. Well, and part of it is chocolate, too. They can't even have well, it, w- it wasn't chocolate. It was just like a cookie. Oh. Okay. Like, it was like a... It wasn't like a Snickers, like that... But this dog has had plenty of chocolate chip cookies. He's had a payday. He's had protein bars mm. because he steals things from the counter. Allegedly. That's what I was told. <laughs> Wow. So there you story. go. There's your no there's your update on anybody's life. I'm that would sure. be a friend of mine's life. I'm sure DPS. I'm sure that's yeah. Is DPS is gonna be knocking at your friend's door. Mm-hmm. It's probably aware of it by now because yeah. Well, well, well. Um, dogs will be mentioned in the story. But it's not it's not it's not as sad as your story. I was watching a chase just a while ago and the guy was like tweaking out on whatever and he threw the dog out of the car people and then he crashed into these other cars people did not care about him crashing into other cars or how the people were they were real pissed about the dog dog so everybody gets real mad about this dog situation yeah well that one's not sad this is (coughs) this is just we're gonna talk about a dog sitter oh hell let's go to um idaho idaho utah with a hose 
Um, and let's talk about the scream murder. Ooh, what was it? Okay. I know. Idaho? In Idaho. And it's not Brian Koberger. Yeah. Um, and I just heard of it yesterday, so I decided to do it. So let's go. So, and we're going to 2006. This is Southern Idaho. And the place is called Provo. Pocatello. Oh. Pocatello, Idaho. Provo's in Utah. Never mind. Sorry. (laughs) Geography. They're real close. Wait. Idaho, Utah. No, Idaho. So. I get them all mixed up. Well, they're right next door. And they're basically the same. They are next door? Yeah. Okay. We're in September. So it's like beginning of the school year. And a 911 call comes in September 24th. So a police officer gets dispatched to this 911 call, and this is a small town, so he recognizes the address. So he goes, and when he pulls up and goes inside the house, there's a dead teenager. She is a junior at Pocatello High School. Her name is Cassie, Casey Joe Stuttert. <gasps> Casey Joe Stuttert. Heard of it? Yeah. Now, a word from our sponsors. She had two brothers. She was the middle child. She was very close with her brothers. She was described as a great kid. She got straight A's. Um, she wasn't like us. She didn't party. She didn't drink. She loved to read. She loved music. She lit up a room. Oh, no. Was she bubbly? She was probably bubbly. Oh, no. She was responsible and honest. And so people often hired her to babysit, dog sit, and house sit for them is this my story <laughs> kind of no Except because for she, that she just <laughs> doesn't drink <or laughs> and do she's any, responsible and she's responsible oh, Lord. so let's talk about what happened to casey joe okay so on september 22nd casey goes to go house it for her aunt and her uncle they call her up and they're like we're going out of town for the weekend they had three cats and two dogs. And oh. they live like 20 minutes out of town. And they wanted to come and watch the house. They had just bought this house. It was in the middle of nowhere. It was secluded. And they wanted her there for all the dogs. I'm doing that in February. Mm-hmm. Well. For a week. You better learn something from this then. Okay. So... This was a Friday, so after school on Friday, her mom dropped her off, and her boyfriend's name is Matt Beckham. Now, her aunt and uncle and her mom loved Matt Beckham. They had been together. He's just great. He was responsible. They were just a good, responsible high school love couple, and he was coming over there to house sit with her. So um, they were going to do the things. They were going to watch TV, watch movies, eat snacks. The dogs were there, feed the dogs, you know, do all the things. Huh. About 8.30 <coughs> that evening, two other classmates showed up. Tori, a boy, Adam Check, and Brian Draper. Okay. So now there's four of them there. And they, all four of them hung out for a little over an, an hour. They mm. watched Kill Bill Volume 2. They ate snacks. Um, and they took like a little tour of the house because it's just this big country house and they wanted to see the house. About 9.45, Tori and Brian decided to leave because they said Kill Bill sucks. We're mm. going to go to the movies and watch that goes down to the basement. So the dog's sitting at the top of the stairs, barking and growling. So they get kind of freaked out because they're in the middle of nowhere and they're not used to this. And then the lights go off for a little, for a couple moments. Okay. And then they come back on. Okay. Is there a storm? It's not a storm. Okay. That happens twice. Oh, hell no. Did the phone ring? <laughs> the phone does not ring yet. Okay. Actually, oh, 
M- Matt's mom calls him. So boyfriend's mom calls and says, I'm on my way to come and pick you up. Because it's like a little after 10 o'clock. And um, he says, okay, but I want to stay. Can I stay here? It's a, it's a little scary out here. It's real dark. The electricity's gone out. I don't want Casey to be here by herself. Yeah. And she was like, sorry, absolutely not. You're 16 years old. They're both 16. I don't know if I mentioned that. Yeah. Um, and neither one of them drive. I'm coming to get you. Mm-hmm. So she's on her way. Now, when she got there, she says, if Casey wants to come, she can come and stay at our house. Okay. You can't leave the dogs. Well, I mean, you can. That's what Casey said. Casey was like, I made a commitment to like, watch yeah, the house. you can't leave the other people's dogs. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to leave the dogs. I should stay. So she did. Mm. So it was about 1115 when Matt left. So Casey's now there by herself. Um, now, Matt's le- gone, and on the way home, he calls Tori and Brian that left earlier. Those are his friends. Mm-hmm. He called them up, and he's – because he's like, well, Casey's sitting for the weekend. I'll hang out with them this weekend. So he calls up Tori, and when Tori answers, he's whispering like this. Oh, why is he whispering? He's whispering, and – but he's like, hey, I remember I'm in the movies. Oh. So – they didn't get to talk very long. They hung up the phone. Oh, yeah. So Matt didn't think anything of it. He also called Casey when he got home because it's high school love, right? Yeah. So he also called Casey when he got home. High school love. You, what do you do? You talk on the phone. You fall asleep on the phone. Oh, yeah. You wake up the next day. Yeah. You call in the morning. You know. So, but Casey didn't answer the phone. So he was kind of worried about her because they were a little freaked out when they left. But maybe she fell asleep. Mm-hmm. Now, the next day was a Saturday, and it was September 23rd. And his mom had plans to run all these errands all day. So she was gone all day. He was calling to check on Cassie, Casey periodically throughout the day, but he got no answer. So he called friend Tori mm-hmm. and said, Tori, you need a <coughs> gum? could you drive me? Tori, could you drive me to where Casey was last night? I haven't heard from her, Can and I just want to check on her. Can you drive me out there? And Tori was like, bro, I don't got any gas. Bro, no. Sorry. I mean, even though it was cheaper back then, yeah. still, no. Can't, can't, can't take it. you. Mm-mm. So he decides to call Casey's mom. He calls Casey's mom and he calls and he's like, I haven't, I'm trying to call Casey and I can't talk to her. Have you talked to Casey? And Casey's mom is like mad. No, I've been trying to get a hold of her too. I've called, I've called the house phone. (coughs) I've called the cell phone and I cannot talk to her. Like she hasn't answered. So she's mad. Like, I need her to answer the phone. Yeah. So when you talk to her, tell her to call me. She's like, lady. (coughs) It's like something stabbing me right here. (coughs) That happened to me at New Year's, and I had to go into the bathroom, and I started crying. I mean, I had, I like, tears started coming out because I had. (coughs) The water just came right back up. (laughs) (laughs) Ah! Content. After New Year's, I got sick. I was sick for like three no. Days. You were kind of sick Year's like Eve. before. Yeah. So that. So I drank tequila that whole night. Cause my mom was like, "Do like my dad used to do, who was <coughs> no go <coughs> 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 drink tequila. It makes you real warm. Makes make you, you warm. Better. Yeah. I mean, I'm just it's soothing. Oh, so it no, makes you feel better. Whiskey. And um, I drank whiskey the night before. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I feel fine. And the next morning, like, I was dead for just like three days and it was over with. Yeah, that's fine. <coughs> okay. I'm cured. It's gone. So, 
So, okay, we... Ca- Cassie's, the, Cassie's mo- mom. Casey's mom. Casey's mom. I'm thinking about P. Diddy and Cassie. I'm thinking about Stacy, because Stacy's mom. She's <laughs> <laughs> got it going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, a hot mess. Boyfriend was worried. Mom was worried, but nobody ever went over there to go check on Casey. Even though this was out of character for Casey. Why and so they as I check on her, that's rude. I know, but not everybody thinks worst case scenario like we do. Oh, yeah, no. So and don't act like you would have went to go check on Casey. You would have been like, Well, she's, Oh yeah. She's feeding the dog. Yeah. I would have <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now by the time Matt's mom gets home, it's like later in the evening, Saturday, and she's like, I'll drive you out there if you want to. Let's go check on her. I'll take you. But Matt had already had plans for a sleepover. He's going to Tori's house to have a sleepover with Tori and Brian. And so he's like, no, don't worry about it. She's coming home tomorrow. I'll see her tomorrow. I'll talk to her tomorrow because she's staying Friday through Sunday. <laughs> So, I mean, they're high schoolers. I guess the worry just kind of went away because it's Saturday night and he had plans. And Tori, like, these are the friends, but Tori is a No, they're both boys. (coughs) Okay. Yeah. Okay. (coughs) Tori and Brian are boys. So, the next day, on schedule, it was Sunday, Casey's aunt and uncle come home and Casey's 13-year-old cousin, Kelsey, Kelsey walks in the house first and she sees blood everywhere and Casey's body on the floor. The house was a wreck. She's the one that calls 911. Emergency 911? I need an ambulance. Okay, what's going on? There's a dead guy on my floor. He's missing a finger. It's real short. There's a dead girl on my floor. She's missing, missing a, finger. a finger. So she didn't realize at first. Who Who is this that called This is Kelsey. So remember, she's sitting at her aunt and uncle. So this is her cousin. Okay. Her little cousin. But the crime scene was so bad, she, I don't think it registered to her that she actually discovered her favorite big cousin, Casey, that was she dead didn't on know her who floor. It was. She yeah, I don't think it just registered yeah. yet. I think she was just like, "There's a dead girl on my floor." <laughs> so that was her. Casey had been stabbed over thirty times. Oh, that's the you know what the one thing I don't want to be is stabbed. Mm-mm. I mean, I can't even handle a paper cut. No. Mm-mm. Twelve of those were to her heart. Oh no, it's personal. So what are you thinking, like, right now? I have no idea. No idea. Who do you think the first suspect is? Well, the boyfriend. Boyfriend. (laughs) So, of course, police question boyfriend Matt. And a word gets around quick. It's small town. And the whole school is blaming Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt. Matt's a killer. Matt's a killer. So Matt and his mom go in to the police department and because he's underage and so mom's in there while he's getting questioned and they ask where was casey when you last saw her well he tells them the whole story yeah even matt's mom cosigns on his story says casey came to the door when i picked him up she was alive she waved um she was going to come over but she was Dog, dog sitting, sitting and had to keep like the she dogs. made a commitment. Yeah. So, but the police noticed that his demeanor was very robotic, like like there wasn't a lot of emotion, and you just found out your girlfriend has been stabbed, brutally stabbed, and murdered thirty times, and you were the last person that saw. And your reaction is, blah, blah, blah. Mm-mm. So, <coughs> this seemed a little sus, but they realized that... Then again, you never know how somebody's going to respond. No, no. And they asked him to take a polygraph test, and he agreed, well, yeah. and he passed with flying colors. Flying colors, just like the Anthonys. His... <laughs> <laughs> yes, just like the Anthonys. 
and he was no longer considered a suspect at that time. Okay. Though they questioned him multiple times. Yes. Just and to he make complied. sure his story didn't change. Now, and that was the tactic of this Idaho. And I'm just going to have to co- um, applaud Idaho again. This was in 2006. They kicked ass last year with Moscow, with Koberger. They, I mean, when, you, when I hear this story, nothing in this story really made me talk shit about Idaho Police Department. Oh, so that's good. Get yeah. killed in Idaho. If you're going to get killed, get killed, get killed in, Idaho. in Idaho. So he was no longer a suspect. So if it's not boyfriend, who could have done this is what the popos are thinking. So they remember Matt telling them that the lights kept flickering on and off. Mm -hmm. (coughs) No reports of a power outage. And so they're wondering if someone could have messed with the breakers. So they sent crime scene over there to try to see if there's any fingerprints on the little breaker switches. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay. We are doing much better than the Ohio police who don't check vans. They got (coughs) fingerprints. Multiple. I mean, like some fingerprints. Yeah. And it was a match to a local man that they knew. And this man happened to be close to Casey. It was her mom's boyfriend. So I didn't read anything about dad in the story, Casey's dad, Mm -hmm. but mom had a close living boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So why would he be over there? Why would his fingerprints be on the the breaker breaker box? Real weird. So they bring him in and they question him. And... He actually does electrical work. (laughs) Oh, hell no. (laughs) Damn it. And he had done some work for them a while back after they, you know, moved in. And that story checked out with the aunt and uncle. They asked, where was he? You got to quit moving that because we heard it the whole last episode. Last two episodes. Is it in your way? Mm -mm. Or get it adjusted and then. Put it where you want it. Yeah. Remember, it was kept falling last time. Yes. So it was like driving you crazy. So I it's perfect now. Off. It's it's okay. not. It's um okay. So they asked him where his like where he was. Where were you at? What was your alibi? Like because she was killed that Friday night. Where were you at? And so he's like, I was playing poker with the neighbors next door. I was there all night. They checked with the neighbors. His neighbors in town, not the Mm -hmm. neighbors of aunt and uncle, they co-signed on his alibi. So he was ruled out as a suspect. So now they're back to like, who could have done this? (coughs) Questioning Matt again. And Matt comes in and he's like, I forgot to tell you that. Because they were like, was anybody else there? I forgot to tell you I had my two best friends over there. I forgot to tell you Tori and Brian were there. Mm. And they were like, how did you forget? Tori and Brian. And he was like, well, I was focused on I was the last person there. They had left, you know, two hours before I did. And and they went to the movies. Yeah. So police were like, oh, we need to get all up on Tori. And they're like, great. We got somebody else to question. Let's get Tori and Brian. They were also at the house. Now, they're underage as well, so they're questioned in two different rooms with their parents. And they said that they left the house to go see a movie. And they weren't really thinking much about these kids. Mm -mm. But when they asked them what movie they saw, they went blank. Oh, no. They forgot what movie they saw. Well, what was it about? What was it about? Yeah don't know they couldn't think of anything Hmm. so Hmm. but they didn't want to they were just like seems like a simple question yeah asked them some other just like random questions and then they let them go okay they said but don't go anywhere because we'll probably bring you back in for some questioning Mm -hmm. and this was their tactic they questioned the same people multiple times to see if their stories were changing so when they let them go they went up to the movie theater 
they got the roster of movies that Friday night, times, and every movie that played. And did they see Tori and Brian on the list? Well, and then they questioned the ticket takers oh. and the concession stand workers. Because back in the day, it's people only act, one. it was actually people who took your tickets. Yeah. You didn't just... And think a small down a small town like a movie theater, mm-hmm. and it just so happens that their classmate works up there. Oh, so their yeah. classmate would recognize if Tori and Brian were coming in. Yeah. So he interviewed classmate, movie theater classmate, and Tori and Brian were nowhere to were nowhere Have near no, the movies. Mm-mm. They were not there. They were not seen. So they brought them back in. And they were like, you know, we actually talked to the movie theaters, and you You didn't go. You weren't there. You weren't there. Mm -mm. Nope. You weren't. And Tori was like, oh, I mean, uh, I think it was Brian. We went to the movie theater 30 minutes away. He was like, oh, well, we we didn't want to tell you. Mm. I was trying to keep this a secret, but... We were doing it in the parking lot. We, we, didn't, we didn't make it into the movie. <laughs> we were checking going through vehicles. And they were like, what? What? Yeah, we were checking cars that were unlocked, going through parking lots. If cars were unlocked, we were rummaging through the cars for looking for things to steal. Okay, so. <laughs> what? Now, this is one of them telling the story. This is. Brian telling this story, or Tori telling this story, and the police were like, oh, well, what parking lot were you in? And he was like, oh, I don't know. They, Tori was driving, Brian was driving, I don't know where we were. So he, like, came up with a good answer, but it just, it changed. So in the other room, the other one's telling, like, a whole different story. So they were like, you know what, let's just clear this up. Y'all are going to take a polygraph test. That's how we ruled out boyfriend. Mm-hmm. That's how we ruled out mom's boyfriend. Let's take a polygraph test. Parents, do we have your permission? Parents are like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they go out. They get the polygraph person. They come back in, and Brian is crying. Oh, no. What happened? Did he get a he's, cough, and he got a tear come out? or what, he, what? He's crying, and he's like... Real red, and he's just know. like, I, I, I gotta uh, tell y'all something. Oh, what do you need to tell us, Brian? I, I, Captain. He says this is all Tori's fault. Oh no! <laughs> Throw it under the. I keep thinking it's a herd. Throwing his buddy under the bus and running him over. It was supposed to be a joke. We were supposed to reenact a scary movie, and we were just supposed to scare Casey. Oh, well, what happened? But we were not supposed to hurt her. No. So they were like, tell me. What are you even saying? What are you talking about? So, turns out, when they were there watching the movie, Mm. Kill Bill Volume 2, they did their little tour of the house. Mm -hmm. Brian walked down the stairs to the basement and unlocked the basement door that goes to outside. Uh Uh-huh. When they left, they did not leave. They just drove down the road. And watched and waited. And walked back. Oh. And snuck in the basement. (laughs) They flickered the lights to try to get them to come down to the basement to scare them. Ah. And they were going to video it scaring them and everything is going to be this big old trick yeah. but they didn't come down to the basement Mm-mm. and they tried to scare them again and they didn't come down and then matt left and tori went crazy went upstairs and stabbed and killed casey he had no idea that that was the plan it was all tori he just stayed down and screamed and cried in yeah. fear yeah he was he was scared of tori he was scared of tori so so then the police go back into the room other room with tori and they're like tori your friend's in there talking 
Tell mm-hmm. me what really happened. And Tori's like, we were trying to steal shit in cars. Like, I, give me a lawyer. You don't believe me? Give me a lawyer. So he lawyers up. You should have done lawyered up about <coughs> two days ago. When the lawyer finally comes in, he tells the story, but he's blaming it all on Brian. Uh-huh. Right? That's how it does. Well, usually when there's two killers. So, they, he, the story is about the same thing. So, it turns out when Matt called them up and they whispered on the phone, they were in the basement. They were in the basement. The call was coming from inside the house. The call was coming from inside the house. (laughs) Uh, Sounds like a movie I've seen. Tori showed up with a dagger. A dagger? Brian showed up with a hunting knife. What are they, hunting vampires over here or something? They both had on white masks that had red blood splatter. There's pictures of them. White face? It was like white, it was a white mask with red blood coming out of the eyes and out of the mouth. Oh. It was like a red Halloween mask. They stabbed her 30 times, 12 of them being to the heart. She fought her ass off, mm. which is why she was oh, missing a finger. Gosh. Um, and then they left her body there and fled the scene. Of course. Now, they were booked and they were held on bond. But all they have really is Brian's like testimony. <clears throat> and Tori's testimony, but they're both like blaming it on each other. The autopsist mm-hmm. said there are two separate stab wounds. So that leads me to believe both you motherfuckers were stabbing. Oh, yeah, Where like the direction of it was like you could tell it was and like it's two, two different, different knives. Like and angles. two different knives. Yeah. Like one was more serrated <clears throat> than the other. Oh, shit. What? what? They're like... <laughs> Taking I mean, turns. What is the what? Okay. So were they on anything? Like, did they eat the brownie cookie? Or they ate whatever the that person's my friend's dog ate. What's so crazy is you won't hear anything about drugs or even about mental health. So Brian led investigators. So Brian's the one that's talking a whole whole lot. Mm-hmm. He leads investigators to a place in a canyon. Uh, right off the road, about 20 minutes away from the where they killed Casey. And they dig a little bit. And when they pull something out of the ground, it's the mass. It's the <gasps> gloves, bloody gloves that they had oh. on. Three knives and a VHS tape. Oh, hell. VHS. That, to me, that is porn or uh, what's it called? Um... Where it's like dirty porn, like where it's... uh, Oh, um, snuff. Snuff. Snuff porn. So police were like, what is on this tape? We need it. Is it hitting the thing? Mm -hmm. I'm... I'm Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, We need to see what's on this tape. Now, it had all been partially burned. So they sent it off to see if they can get recover what was on this tape and they could (gasps) so they all sat down and they think they're about to watch the murder oh no but they're not they're watching a sex tape (laughs) they're watching a was it part of epstein's files (laughs) that they found buried I think it might have been. Oh, hell. We're here in his car. September 22nd. The time is 9.50. September 22nd, 2006. Um, unfortunately, we have the grueling task of killing our two friends. And they are right in that house, just down the street. We just talked to them. We were there for an hour. But we checked out the whole house. We know there's lots of doors. There, there's lots of places to hide. Um, I locked the back doors. That's all locked. Now we just gotta wait. And um, 
Yeah. We're, we're really nervous right now, but you know, we're ready. We're listening to the greatest rock band We've ever. We've waited for this for a long time. Pink Floyd. Before we commit the ultimate crime of murder. We waited for this for a long time. A long time. We'll stay tuned. Just killed Cassie. We just left her house. This is not a fucking joke. I'm I stabbed her in the throat and I saw her lifeless body just disappear. Dude, oh I just God. killed Cassie. Oh, oh, fuck. That felt like it wasn't real. I mean, it went by so Shut fast. Shut the fuck up. We gotta get our act straight. It's okay. Okay. We'll, we'll, let's buy movie tickets now. Okay. Come on. Here. Goodbye. No. Goodbye. <sighs> okay. It's Cassie. It must be spelled differently. No, it's C A S S I E. Why the hell you think that means Casey? I don't know. Oh hell, April on crack. So this is like a. It's like that's the Snapchat murders because it they are filming this on like a like an actual camp camp quarter. Camp quarter yes. That that has the yeah camp quarter. Okay. And that it reminds me of that those two high school kids that killed their teacher yes. and they did the Snapchat stuff. It reminds me. And they completely <laughs> admitted like it's like that you, when you're young, obviously you don't think past what you do, but I mean who videotapes this and like, oh yeah, we just murdered like what? So <clears throat> uh, Cassie. They watch this. Now we know that her name's sorry, Cassie. Sorry, it's sorry, okay. sorry. It's okay. Cassie, Cassie, Cassie. Um so they watched this. The first part was before they committed the murder. So once when they left and they got back into the car and then right afterwards they turned on the camcorder. Okay, now this is September twenty first and caught, right? If we're going for guns, we're just gonna end it. We're just gonna uh, grab the guns and get out of there and kill everybody in the lane. We're going to make History. We're gonna make history. For all you FBI agents watching this, <laughs> uh, you weren't quick enough. You weren't quick enough and you weren't s smart enough. And we're going over today, Nixon's house. We're, we're gonna go snoop around over there and try to see if she's home alone or not. And if she's home alone. Oh, they're trying to go to another house and do it again. So this was the day before the murders. Oh. So they tried on September 21st mm -hmm. to kill somebody else. So they were going to their house. So they had been planning to do, to commit these murders. Um, but they showed up. They're going to show in a second that they pulled up and somebody, they weren't home alone. And so later on it'll tell us, oh, I guess we got to resort to killing our friends. Because they are going to later find out that their friends will be alone later on. Oh so they my, were going to yeah. kill Matt, their good friend, and Cassie. Um, but Matt left. And the only reason why Matt wasn't killed is because his mom left. made him <gasps> go home. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> but listen to how they talk about murder, how they justify it, and like they just said, you FBI agents that are watching this, you're too late. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. Like, they're just very much taunting. They're splashed. Don't, she did. Don't put your humor into this, Brian. Uh, I, I'm not putting your humor into it. Yep. People will die. Memories will fade. Memories will fade. I wonder what movie you got that from, Brian. Myself. <laughs> that was for myself. No wonder it was so lame. Okay, we're on our way, and I'm gonna... I'll let you stay tuned. We're almost there. Dixon's house. It's clear out there in the pasture. We've already snooped around her house a couple times. Uh, it, she, she's not at home, so... We're gonna go to the church over there, and we're gonna call... A, a girl and a guy named Cassie and Matt. They're our, our friends, but we have to make sacrifices, so. Um, I feel t tonight it is the night, and I feel really weird, you know, it's my stomach and stuff, and I feel like I want to kill somebody. So, uh, 
I know that's not we need another one, but what the hell? I feel we need to break away from normal life. How bright is this light? Because let's turn it this way. Parents, along with their parents, along with their parents, and so on, uh -huh. taught them about God, Jesus, the whole bullshit <laughs> line. I'm sure you guys believe in God as well. I realized when I was in seventh grade, along, you don't believe in Santa Claus or <laughs> vampires or werewolves. They're used to metaphor not to let they teach their kids back in the 1800s I learned this in English class about telling their kids that you can't go outside or a vampire will get you just to make their kids stay and do what they want to do God uh, is basically God's the word, same right? way yep. trying to get people to do good or else so called you go to hell and we're obviously going to hell if it's real, but you know what? Who gives a shit? Uh, yeah. And yeah. why would yeah, you say it's real? Yeah, but it's not it's real. real. It's not I real because it's so blatantly obvious it's not real. But <laughs> People believe it because their parents teach them. And so it's so hard for them to let go of it because they've been taught their whole life. Yeah, I know. But fucking what the point I'm making is... What's that point? We are also taught that things like killing people and all, the other thing is wrong. The only thing that it's wrong about is because it's breaking the law, and the law is only wrong. It, the law is Natural selection, dude. Because Natural selection, that's all I gotta say. There should be no law against killing people. I know it's a wrong thing, oh, but... No. Hell, selection. hell, you restrict somebody from it, they're gonna want it more. Exactly. Goodbye. Wait, this kid oh looks like goodness. a whole hot mess. Like he's like blinking, like moving around, and and well, he's blinking because the guy, lights. Which one bright. is that one? That <clears throat> that is Tori. That that one that was just talking uh -huh. is Tori. Uh -huh. and the one that the, the, is recording it is Brian. Uh, Brian. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. Man, they have those weasel nasally voices. Yes. Like they're just. What? Ugh. What are these people's the evil coming from? Like they're like, oh, just what? Why? Are you, why do you need to kill your friends? And why are you playing Mozart like that? And the, no, he, they just I'll let you tell Mozart. the story because I'm sure you'll tell us everything. Well, <clears throat> it goes on and uh, like it goes on. Yeah, that's it's about like a, thirty minutes worth of, of okay a video. But <clears throat> so a little bit in the next couple of minutes here they say we're going to do just like scream i want to do i want to be like the movie scream um and then they talk about their favorite serial killers oh no they compare themselves to ed but they said the name wrong. Probably like I say it, Gain. <laughs> Ed Gein? Yeah. Gain. The Gein. They, they compare so themselves to the Hillside Strangler and to Ted Bundy. Um, and how are they even remotely like e any of them? I don't. They're just. They just want to be famous. Yeah. They just want to be. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then they are obsessed with school shooters and oh, the no. Columbine shooters. Oh. So then the police find out that Brian, not the one in this video, the other one, there's a dark haired one. He actually has a commemorative Columbine shooting dedicated like a website where he does list all the victims. But if you keep looking down at the bottom of the website, it says what Dylan and what's there will be more victims soon. Part of this video is them going through their kill list. They have a kill list. It's like a dozen people on there, but they're supposed to end it with the school shooting. So they start off with the stabbing that they wanted to video and make their own scary movie. Like Scream. Oh, my God. So they did video the actual... They didn't video the stabbing, but they wanted to create... They wanted to video enough of this so that somebody else makes a scary movie about them. Oh, my gosh. But Scream had already been made, yeah. Scream came out in 96, I think. 
Okay. So they filmed themselves um, skipping class in the library as they're making their death list of about a dozen people that they wanted to kill and how they wanted it to end in a school shooting. They filmed the morning of the killing, so the 22nd at school. They filmed Cassie at her locker, hanging out with her. So I just, like, imagined Cassie's mom, the la- her last hours oh my God. on video that you want to see, but, like, her killers are oh videoing my her. gosh. Um... They also find out that they're obsessed with scary movies and serial killers and all this stuff. Mm. Now, at the end of the video, it ends at their locker. And in their lockers, their lockers were like the tall. I don't know what you had. My Our lockers uh-huh. were just like somebody had a locker under me. So okay. there's bottom ones and it top ones. It was like junior high was one and high school was the other. Okay. So theirs was like all the way down. So it was one yeah. big long locker. Yeah. yeah. So when you opened up their locker, there had different pictures of all the different like famous scary movies so like the scream posters were in there like just little mm-hmm. cutouts mm-hmm. um friday 13th halloween evil dead um mm-hmm. and they also had their trench coat hanging up in there and the type of cigarettes that eric and dylan oh had my in their gosh. in their um trench coat pocket which are the columbine shooters Columbine shooters. Um, and then the last thing was saying, when y'all make a movie about us, I want you to basically honor my wish and make sure that the actor that plays me, this was a, a Tori saying this, Ugh. looks just like me. Oh, we I can't want find the a, actor no, There's no <laughs> actor that just that like me. That gross. And Brian was like, yeah, me too. I second that. Oh, I second okay. That. Brian's the follower. Tori's obviously the leader. Okay. So or Brian, wait, which one was the strap on? <laughs> they were tried separately, obviously, for first degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. They were both tried as adults and they both got life sentences plus 30 years for the conspiracy charge. Mm-hmm. The trial, like the... Um, Did they plea in not guilty? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it ever even said. I'm well, sure if they had a full trial. Well, I mean, yeah. If th- that's what it's like. If they had a full trial. Well, I don't know what their... See, I know their lawyers tried to get all the video thrown out. Mm-hmm. But it didn't work. It was played in court. I know that the jury was um, not sanctioned, but sequestered. Oh. Um, yeah. And the trial, it was like a big... Yeah. Big trial. Um, now... During that trial, Tori's family, so the uh-huh. crazy looking one uh-huh. that had the most fun doing it, mm-hmm. he still maintains his innocence. He says it was all Brian, and his parents believe him. And his mom Did even they not wrote see a the book. video? His mom even wrote a book about it, and it's called. The guilty innocent. <laughs> <laughs> it, wow, the creativity! Um, you really, you really went above and beyond with your title. <clears throat> There's okay, so I watched a documentary. It's called The Last Day. Keith, it's a Dateline. So Keith Morrison oh. did it, and um, it it showed them at the end. But even on this, when he talks about. What he did, he mm-hmm. smiled. But she's, about after all, the guilty innocent. Take this off. <gasps> Where? Tori's a good kid, and Tori, Tori is Watch just a kind, Tori. kind, kind person. And we're still a family. He's still every bit as much a part of our family as before. I remember the first article I read about my case. He's smiling. Jeez, I mean, they made me sound like this brutal, cold, psychopathic killer. We were talking about Brian. You, they were making you just like they made, they made they put us like as the same person he still didn't commit this crime yeah, I mean, I he's, mean, not like that. That. he's not I'm saying that he's not saying i was i made some mistakes and i learned from them but your mistakes oh. weren't anything you were charged with they weren't the most this is the parents 
parents. Those are the parents. The they're mistakes are you made a video. That's the they're saying the mistakes are. They're like, oh, you killed a girl, but the mistakes you should have made a video. But it's fine that you killed her. Um, That's what I heard. Convictions in the 2006 murder of Cassie Joe Stoddard. One, I owe a tremendous debt to uh, Cassie Stoddard, and the only way that I could even start you uh, paying that is to, first of all, tell exactly what happened to her, and and do not dishonor her in I anything that you do in your life. And I've, uh, you know, I've tried that. It's very hard. It's very hard. Um, but I think that it's all I can do, and I have an obligation. I have to do that, or I'm, I'm, you know, a monster, I guess. Later, Brian at least would take some accountability for what he did. At least he was. Uh, I, I don't, I don't believe either one of them. I 100% think both of them are have no empathy. I, believe I think the he last was trying to more. get. I think he was just trying to think of words to, like, say. But he is the one that has expressed the most sorry, sorrowful, whether he feels it or not. Right. He actually called Keith Morrison, like, on the Dateline. He like called in, and he said that basically he blames scary movies. And that um, okay, bro. filming it, you feel like there's an audience, and so you feel cheered on, and that you feel like you um, like you feel like a sense of fame, and that it's just all the scary movies. So Tori, the real crazy one, has appealed his many times, mm -hmm. but it's been dismissed. They are both in the same Idaho State prison together, uh -huh. but they are not friends. They see each other like in passing and at like cafeteria and lunchtime and stuff, but they are not friends. Now, Ka Cassie's family, of course, lived a nightmare for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. The mom ended up dying of cancer. But right after the murder, the high school painted a mural of Cassie on the outside of the building. Their football Aww. team wore her initials <coughs> on their armbands for years. The aunt that the house was, mm -hmm. that the murder happened in the house, was so distraught, she lost her job. The uncle divorced and left the family. Oh, no. And the little cousin that found her attempted suicide. Oh, God, this, they ruined the so many lives. Ugh. They see stupid and this and those stupid their parents. I'm pissed at their parents oh, too. Oh, I know. And their adopted parents. So he's adopted. That one unadopt. Was adopt. Unadopt. unadopt. That's even easier. Adopt. Bye. <laughs> see ya. Go and adopt somebody <sighs> else. They tried to sell that house and they could not sell it. I bet you. Were and biased. it was there like dream home like they had just bought it out there on like this land it was just horrible horrible oh, horrible horrible my. i do remember this this i remember the name at least the last name yeah. <laughs> obviously um and that i remember like bits and pieces like i remember they recorded st but i didn't know the whole like ins and outs of everything so that I, was a good story i have not heard of that soupy sent that to me really <clears throat> I was like another scream killer because I did the Rollins, yeah, the Rollins yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. And there wasn't a lot of similarities. It's because that they reference scream so much in the I video. I think the the scream was based on that on Danny Rollins, right? Was yeah. it scream based on his murders? Yeah. And so then they wanted to have they copied the mm -hmm. movie, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and they wore the mask and they had the type of knife. Um. And the fact that she was like home alone and yeah, I don't. I mean, they tried. They tried to be famous. They wanted movies made behind them, but no, it was really that is so just 
like waste. Like it, you are a waste. It's disgusting. And if you watch, because the um, the interrogation is on video too. Mm. So Brian is the one that confesses first right before the polygraph. So he's sitting there crying and his parents are just kind of sitting there with their arms crossed like this. Like the mom is just sitting there with their arms crossed looking at him. And I don't know what the perfect reaction is, but I would have like probably had a heart attack. I would think so. Or I'd be Died. like. Or jumped across, like, I don't know, but I, I don't think that I would have just said, You would at least arms scream? Crossed. Like, be like, what? You know, like. And the dad was just, like, rubbing his elbow or something like that. It was, it's just so weird. Well, obviously, they, these parents have taught them about nothing because they talked about how. Did In they talk about the parents grade. were religious? They weren't religious. They were saying that. People learned religion from their parents. And their parents and their parents. So he it sounded like he said that his parents told him about like Tooth Fairy and Santa and God and everything. But generations of people lie to you about these things. So he's comparing the Tooth Fairy to fairy God. tale yeah. to God and, and heaven. It's just, it's Mm-mm. the worst. You have no chance. Mm-mm. You can go and be with the Nepophilia and you can just live your worst life with those Gosh. demon giants mm-mm, mm-mm. Good. well great story that was good uh that was that was a good one real evil yeah real evil. and then that young that's what gets me it's like what and then who like i can watch those scary movies all day long i mean so what's the difference uh, I don't I've never had the urge after I've watched a scary movie or talked about uh, 130 true crime episodes that I'm going to like, oh, I think, you know, it's what? time. I think it's time. Yeah. I'm going to go stab somebody. And then what gets me is like, how I do you videotape find a friend? About it. Yeah, you videotape. But then how do you find a friend just as psycho on the same level that's willing to do it? Like your your Snapchat people that killed the teacher. Yeah. Like how do it's got to be something do, with there their two of them at the same and their time. friends and their talk. I don't know. I don't know how teenage boys are. And uh, apparently I don't this know story I know. and your story, the yeah. Snapchat. OK, so there's a movie with Sandra Bullock called Murder by Numbers. Oh, You need to watch it. It's Does a longer talk about movie. Adrenochrome and eating children. This is before she was a whatever she is, okay. a chill, a baby blood drinker. Okay. But um and then Ryan Gosling is in it. But she's a... I mean, I'm sold on those two. Tender Bullock's hot. Ryan Gosling's hot. Uh-huh. Let's go. Yeah. But Ryan Gosling is a killer. and But he has a friend that he goes to school with that's a killer. I don't feel And they the hot plan killer. to kill a teacher. What is it called? Murder by numbers. Murder by numbers. But they know they are obsessed with serial killers, so they know they have it perfectly planned out. The forensic, the detail, they even plant, like set up somebody else to go down for the killing. Sandra is Bullock is old? the investigator. It's a little bit older. It's like early two thousands. Sandra Bullock is the investigator that comes in and peeps them out and like finds the truth. Oh. But well, I'm gonna watch it tonight. I'm gonna make my nephew watch it. Okay, I'll, um, I'll watch it too. But it is so good. But it reminded me of this because it's just like two friends that just are obsessed with murder and decide to commit one on oh, their own. Oh, 2002 was when it happened. Yeah. Or when it came out. It's so good. Oh. Watch it and report back on Thursday. It's on Prime Video. Okay. You got to rent it? Even okay. if you have Prime Video? Is that the only place it is? I don't know. Y'all go watch Murder by Numbers. Psychological thriller. Yes. I love a psychological thriller. Now it's long, Caroline. I, but I, but I, I can like get into, hours. like, I can get, like, Fatal, like, everybody needs to go watch Fatal Attraction. The old one? Like, the original? Is there not, is there a new one? No. Yeah, the was old one. Was it redone? One. No. Oh. I just thought about, I just was. Oh, okay. Thinking about the okay. movies like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, that is it. I don't know how long that was, but, but that there was you great. go. There you go. Disclaimer, we need to do a disclaimer at the beginning of the episode that the <laughs> name is wrong. Sorry, I know. <laughs> Sorry. I think I've screwed it up enough times to where it went back and I forth, know, I, I know. I know. I hate it. Uh, I hate it. I hate it. I, I, but isn't that how Casey Turner spells it? No. C-A-S-S-I-E? Mm-mm. How's she spell it? C-A-S-E-Y. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I don't know how we're I was saying cast I don't know I'm not I'm confusing myself sorry stuttered family all right in Jesus name we pray amen <laughs> don't forget to stay aware stay alive and always be DTF and Bye, make sure that your dogs don't eat the chocolate <laughs> weed brownies Bye. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By the the Cover Cover Podcast. Podcast. (laughs) We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure. For (laughs) sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok. So don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You you just kept going. I'm going to introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it it's, because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com. Hey, I'm Katie. And I'm Summer. And this is Monsters in the Attic. So we thought we'd bring people on. Yeah. It's very real, and we're fortunate to have a lot of friends who have a lot of monsters, and we can't wait to share them with you. I love that, that we're so fortunate that we have so many friends with so many monsters. Where can people find us? Facebook, Instagram, and everywhere they listen to their favorite podcast. They can find me at my therapist's office. As they should. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.